this is my wallet. Almost everything in here is connected to my financial records. I've got bank cards, I've got transportation cards, insurance, more insurance, checkbook, loyalty cards, receipts. <laughs> if you live in a developing economy, the chances are that your wallet looks a lot more like this one. It just has some cash in it. How do you build real economic security in a cash economy? Over the last 40 years, financial inclusion initiatives have managed to reach about a billion people. The problem is that two and a half billion remain. If you're one of those two and a half billion people, you're still too expensive to reach. You're either too remote, or you only need a small amount of money that isn't cost effective for the local lending institution, or you simply can't prove how much you have in terms of assets and income. Living in cash economies and working in financial inclusion in Brazil, China, Madagascar, Senegal, and Tanzania, I learned that the problem for financial institutions to boost access to finance really isn't more funding to lend out. It's more information. It's reliable information. When you apply for a loan, a loan officer has to find your house, which can be kind of hard if you don't have a formal address. And they may have to draw a little map to it so they'll be able to come back sometime to check on you. And when they get there, they're going to look at the materials that your house is made of and where it is and all of the contents in it to see how much your assets are worth. And while they're scrutinizing all your belongings, writing down you know, how much they think your table is worth and your sewing machine and your radio, you may not notice that they're also looking at your photos on the walls discreetly. Because they know that you, like so many people, might be so desperate for access to credit that you're willing to try to borrow someone else's house and say it's yours just to get a loan, or borrow someone else's business, or even borrow someone else's children for the day. So after they've done this evaluation of your house, they're gonna go interview all of your neighbors to ask if you actually live there in front of you, which can be awkward if you don't. And <laughs> then they're gonna go to your business and they're gonna try to do the same thing, measure your costs and revenues and your assets and your liabilities. And if they're really lucky, you've written a few things down over the years. So they'll try to calculate how much you can safely afford to borrow on the terms that they can offer. But even if you have written things down, it may take a long time for them to evaluate your business because you probably invented your own accounting system. Average lending costs in microcredit and financial services for poor people average around 30% per year across all loan sizes, but they can go much, much higher. And the cost of lending is around $200 a person all over the world on average. What would it take to get you and all of the institutions trying to reach you the right information? There's 6.3 billion mobile subscriptions active in the world today. If you live in a developing country, chances are you have to register your phone with some form of ID. So it turns out you already have financial records. You just don't have access to them yet. You've got demographic information, like your age and gender. You've got financial transactions, regular ones, even in countries without mobile money, but especially if you can use mobile money. You've got the strength of your social network, all the people you're interacting with. And you've got your location. First Access just finished two and a half years of research and development, proving that these records are enough to accurately predict risk in low-income communities. And working with 15 institutions in Tanzania, including the telecoms and most of the financial service providers serving the poorest part of the population, to establish and learn from them through a business plan that actually aligns the incentives of, of the financial service providers, of the telecoms, and of the consumers, of all these different parties for the first time. It's collaboration that unlocks the value in these data. 
and it ensures that we don't rely just on theoretical scorecards, but on empirical correlations. So how do we turn this information into something that you can actually use? And how do we make sure that you as a consumer are protected? First Access is working with teams at the World Bank and Columbia University to figure out what full disclosure and informed consent really mean in informal markets and to ensure that we're rigorous about incorporating that into our methodology as we expand. So how do you make this accessible? It's gotta be cloud-based, so it can be set up anywhere. It's gotta be instant and available on the phone that you already have, any feature phone, any smartphone. It needs to be affordable, which means that the transaction cost has to be low and the price has to be low and we have to get high volume of transactions and loan recommendations to give out. And most importantly, this information needs to be actionable. It needs to be something that loan officers can use, not an abstract risk score, but a real loan recommendation that's, that's tailored in advance to that particular institution's cost structure and risk tolerance. If you apply for a loan, First Access enables you to, to access your information in real time, turning that information, those data points, into a pivotal asset if you opt to use it. Even if you're high risk, you can establish that you are eligible for loan terms that both you and that local institution can afford. The most exciting thing is that these data can, can get you access to all sorts of other things in the local market too that are usually expensive and not affordable up front. So if you want, you can delete your data when you're done applying for your loan, but you can also track them and build on them over time so that all the things you've done in the past and all the things that you're doing now actually build you a better future. Just imagine how powerful all of these things would be if you had them in one place. First Access is the first secure data marketplace for emerging economies. 